But one of the things that uh, seems clearly cemented in the minds of the corporate leftist media and one that they want to cement in the minds, I think, of Republicans is that the fundamental ideological issue that decided this election was abortion, that it was the Dobbs decision and that uh, this is going to kill Republicans in terms of their hopes in a lot of key states that uh, Democrats were able to, you know, get out the vote on college campuses and in towns and particularly among young single women in ways that uh, that really prevent Republicans being able to appeal uh, in those markets. What is your response to that thesis, which is basically being echoed by every media yeah. entity that isn't on the right? Two points. First of all, if it caused us to lose an election, I don't care. Yeah. This is a moral <laughs> absolute. This is fundamental right and wrong. This is life and death. <laughs> so if overturning Roe v. Wade lost us one midterm election, I don't give a tiny rat's tail. <laughs> you know, you know, when there was a there was a headline uh, two months ago, I think three months ago uh, in in uh, Politico uh, that was uh, the headline was something about Dobbs regret. And of course, yeah. all the quotes were from Republican unnamed Republican consultants, Right. And uh, that kind of thing. And and I remember it being passed around and every pro-lifer I know going, we don't Who care. Is this? We don't care. No, we don't care. But the second thing is it's actually not what it's portrayed to be. Surprise, surprise. The Democrats and the mainstream media are intentionally mischaracterizing it. And for this, I blame Republicans. I blame Republican candidates because what the Democrats did successfully is they took abortion and they branded it not as abortion, meaning not what is abortion. What does abortion do to an unborn baby? What is the abortion procedure? What is the outcome of this? What is the impact it has on the mother? They didn't talk about the what it is of abortion. They branded abortion as contraception. They branded abortion as ectopic pregnancy. And they branded abortion as rape and incest, particularly the, the atrocity that happened to that 10-year-old child in the state of Ohio. And Republicans just let this happen. They didn't push back on this. They didn't say, wait a second, not only are you lying about ectopic pregnancy, of course ectopic pregnancy care mm -hmm. is legal. Not only are you mischaracterizing Republicans' position on life of the mother or, or rape and incest or contraception, for goodness sakes, mm -hmm. but you're ignoring the heart of the matter, which is describe to me what an abortion procedure is. Describe to me when life begins. I didn't see any Republican. Maybe I'm wrong here. You can correct me if there's someone out there who... Um, was doing this and I missed them. But I cannot think of a single high level Republican who was out there saying, no, this is a lie. This is wrong. Don't define our position with a lie. This is what's true. There was a, a situation back in uh, in uh, in the Virginia gubernatorial election between Ken Cuccinelli uh, and Terry McAuliffe years and years ago, where Cuccinelli, having had one of the strongest pro-life records when he was a state legislator, uh, you know, is going up against a, a radically pro-abortion candidate in, in McAuliffe. But Cuccinelli, once he won the nomination, was advised by a lot of Republicans, hey, you're running in a purple state. You're trying to win a very competitive uh, election. You should basically stop talking about the pro-life issue, even though it's been something that you've talked about throughout your career. And what that did was, of course, it completely allowed McAuliffe to do whatever he wanted to do with the issue, yeah. define Cuccinelli according. Now, he ended up almost pulling it out. He, he lost by just a, a handful of, of percentage points in part because of the of the uh, Ted Cruz effort to uh, get rid of Obamacare, which uh, ha sparked a lot of backlash in the uh, in the D.C. bureaucrat community, which uh, controls so much of Virginia. But one of the big takeaways afterwards was that Seeding that ground was a mistake. Yes. And I feel like they're making the same mistake now and made the same mistake. They in are. 22. They allowed Democrats to define the terms of what, you know, being pro-choice means. And they seemed unwilling to engage on the issue. How does that change? How do we make these politicians actually willing to fight on something that they seem so uncomfortable talking about? This isn't just something for politicians, though. That's the first thing to recognize. This is something that the Republican National Committee is supposed to be taking a leadership role on. I mean, what's what's the purpose of the RNC? The purpose is fundraising, election strategy, a platform, and branding. And they've completely neglected their role on this. I mean, every Republican consultant who essentially runs the campaigns of every of every elected member of the of Congress and the Senate were strongly advising against 
candidates and incumbents from even talking about or celebrating this tremendous victory from the Supreme Court, this tremendous victory from uh, for life over abortion. And the RNC has fallen short so many times. I, I talked about on my show, I talked about how the RNC chair elections sound so boring, right? So humdrum. Who cares who the chair of the RNC is? Most people don't even know. Definitely don't care. However, it's an incredibly, perhaps the most overlooked but critical part of our election strategy for 2024, because if we don't have an apparatus at the RNC that controls so much money, controls candidates, controls the platform of the party and the branding, then we're not going to be effective in fighting back against our political enemy. And I say political enemy not because I'm trying to characterize Democrats as enemies, but because the ideology that the Democrats are propagating is an ideology of Marxism, and that is an enemy ideology. And if the RNC doesn't get its act together, if we don't get someone in charge of the RNC that basically can do to the RNC what Elon Musk is doing to Twitter— entirely clean house, I don't see that we will change this. So 